Hello, History Optional students. My name is Soma Shekhar. I am History faculty. I am going to announce History Optional Foundation course. Here I will show you how UPSC used to ask the questions in History Optional and what is the analysis of previous year questions and also what is the approach that should be followed for history optional and how I'm going to deal as part of history optional foundation course. Before starting any optional, it's not only about history optional, irrespective of the optional, first of all, we should know what UPSC exactly demands from a optional student. How do we know that demand? Only way to find out this demand is by seeing the question paper, whatever asked in the last year. This one, 2022 history optional paper. Only one year is not sufficient. We have to see one more year back, three years back, 10 years back. Likewise, if possible, whatever data we have as of now, it is important to go through all the previous year questions. Then only we can exactly find what UPSC really asking. The other part is syllabus. Obviously, syllabus is the first step to see the, the requirement of UPSC. But if we see the syllabus alone, we may not really understand how questions may come. That's why we have to keep syllabus and the previous year questions always with us. As part of history optional foundation course, my focus is exactly how to handle this examination, how to score 300 plus. That is the only motive and each and every effort which we are going to do in the classroom is towards that particular goal. It requires certain strategies it requires uh, certain efforts and commitment both from the teacher as well as from the student. If both matches, definitely scoring 300 is not impossible in history optional. But why 300 is not possible for many students means there are certain areas which require special attention but due to lack of time for the student or due to lack of understanding sometimes students cannot reach 300. As part of foundation course, I will try to make that bridge so that student can cross this 300 mark. History optional foundation course will make you simplified version of history optional. Like I said, to understand exactly the UPSC demand, we have to go through first syllabus, Second one, previous year questions. Every student should always carry, every student should always carry syllabus and previous year questions as long as you are preparing for history optional. Because that is the only compass. Our preparation is like traveling in the ocean. But whether we are traveling in the ocean in the right direction or not, only these two elements will give us or guide us in the right direction. Syllabus and PYQs are the two important elements of our direction. Because whatever effort we put, one problem with history optional is students are very much interested in knowing the past. And most of the students, really they are going to really appreciate the really they are going to enjoy reading the books now only as part of UPSC preparation. But we should not deviate from the path. Our goal is to crack UPSC. We should not deviate from this goal. How can we know that we are deviating from the goal or not means these are the two elements. That's why we should always keep history optional. Students should always carry syllabus of history optional 
and PYQs. Now, if I show you the previous year question, this 2022, our history optional papers contain two papers, paper one and paper two. Paper one contains section A and section B. If I write here, it contains paper one and paper two. In paper one, again we have section A and section B. Similarly, section A and section B. If I open the syllabus, this is what the syllabus says. Now you can see here, this is exactly the UPSC notification. This is how the notification looks like. It says, because that notification contains syllabus of every optional history also. Paper one it says, then chapter one sources. It gives detailed syllabus and in sources, it simplifies our effort. But those, if they look outward appearance, it appears history optional is very big. But this is what making our life simplifying. This detailed syllabus makes very clear what to study in this particular chapter. We need not to worry about other aspects. There might be so many things in chapter in sources itself. But as part of reaching the UPSC goal, our concern is to read these things as best as possible. Sources, next. Second one, prehistory and protohistory, Indus Valley Civilization, megalithic culture, Aryan, and Vedic period. Now, if you see this, likewise, around 24, total 24 chapters, 13th early medieval India, 14th cultural traditions. In paper one, we have total 24. 23 culture during Mughal Empire and 24, 18th century. Now, if you see, nowhere it mentioned ancient India or medieval India. It only mentioned 24 different chapters, and in each and every chapter, what are the sub-themes? That is the only UPSC notification. Next, it says paper two. Again, paper two, it contains different chapters, European penetration into India, British expansion in India, early structure of the British Raj. Likewise, then it will go on. Total, it has 27 chapters in paper two. Disintegration of Soviet Union and the rise of the unipolar world. Factors leading to the collapse of Soviet communism and the Soviet Union, 85 to 91. So that was the last chapter. Nowhere it mentions modern India or modern world. But for our convenience and also after seeing the previous year question paper. Now you see, this is last year's question paper. It says section A and it has given one first number, first question. It has map, then it will go on second question. Map will be given to you. This is how map looks like. Political boundaries, state boundaries, everything will be given. UPSC pinpoint one particular site and it says, for example, 20th site. It says earliest Chaita Gruha. 19th one, Shiva and Buddhist temple complex. You need to identify what is that location and we need to write it. Now, if you go to second paper, second question, this is how it looks. 2A, 2B and 2C. Every question will have 50 marks. Now you see 2A, it is for 20 marks. 2B for 15 marks, 2C is for 15 marks. Likewise, unless we see the question paper, we don't know how questions are being framed and what is the structure of the question paper and how we have to write the answers. That is why always syllabus, but syllabus never said ancient, medieval, modern, or old history. 
Notification simply says paper one. These are the chapters. Paper two. These are the chapters. But based on the previous year questions as well as the kind of question paper UPSC set, we are dividing that into different parts because section question paper itself has having section A and section B. This contains ancient India. Questions from medieval India will come in this section B. Here section A, modern India. And section B, modern world. Based on the question papers, we have another way of segregation to simplify our life. That this is how UPSC is asking the questions. Total paper one contains 24 chapters. When it comes to paper two, 27 chapters. When it comes to ancient part, around 1 to 14 and 15 to 24. But again, UPSC did not exactly said clear cutly that section A contains only up to 14. Based on the questions, we are seeing that the questions from 1 to 14 used to come in section A, from 15 onwards used to come in section B. Sometimes this 13, 14 the chapters, sometimes they may ask in section B also. Because UPSC did not say that I am going to ask in section A these many chapters, section B these many chapters. It is up to UPSC. But as the established norm, more or less 1 to 14 in section A, 15 onwards, medieval part in section B. This is how question paper is going to be framed. As part of our foundation course, we are going to deal one by one. First, we will start with uh, ancient India, then medieval India, then modern India, then modern world. Here, every student, because our first question itself is having map. That's why whoever comes to my class, I will make every student draw India map as well as world map very clearly. For example, India map, this drawing practice will help you not only in history optional, but everywhere in your preparation, in general studies, essay, everywhere throughout the UPSC journey, this skill will help you a lot. I'm going to teach that how to draw India map. Similarly, world map also, because in your GS1, general studies paper one contains history, geography, society. In history and geography, you are going to, in geography particularly, you are going to use map and old map as well as India map. And in history also, I am going to teach you very clearly with this visualization. Because without drawing India map, you have to always imagine what is happening in which location. But if I show you in front of in which location, whatever narration, whatever story we are going to understand, it will be easy it will be easy to understand what is happening here. And at the same time, if something is there in front of you, you will also, your brain also thinks about what happened in this location also around the same time period. For example, if I say from 200 BCE to 300 AD, this is the timeline. I am going to teach you some socio-political economic developments that took place in this part of the Indian subcontinent around this time period. But UPSC may ask the question to integrate the northern part as well as the Deccan part. How do we know or how do we analyze on the spot in the examination? If we have a map in front of you, then it will be very easy for the brain to recollect what is happening in different parts in this time period. You will give very good answer. So one is you are going to draw very good maps. Second one, as part of understanding history, it will help you to understand what is happening in which part of India and at what point of time. For example, Indus Valley Civilization means this is the location. Then when it comes to Aryans, early Aryan settlements 
in this location, later Vedic or later Aryans, this settlement. Now you see how cultures are moving from one location to the other location, and gradually it comes to different parts of India. These developments helped us to make a, a special kind of culture in the world itself, Indian culture. This is what our paper two also contains, culture and society. Our history will help us to understand how our society is keep on evolving, how our culture is keep on evolving. If you have proper idea in front of you, in the form of images, your brain will stick and your brain will try to analyze in a multi-dimensional way. This is one aspect as part of foundation course I am going to teach. Syllabus, previous year questions. I have shown you here only one year, that is last year. I have analyzed all the 44 years. In our database, we have 44 years PYQs. This is the analysis of 44 years PYQs. By seeing these questions analysis, you will get before entering into the subject itself, how questions are being framed in each and every chapter. You say this, all the 44 years, I have given each and every year, last 44 years for every chapter, how questions are being asked. As I said, our syllabus contains like this, 27, 26, 25 unit wise, I segregated in the similar fashion. Chapter one sources, we have seen in the notification. In this chapter, this is how questions are being asked. Earlier there was one kind of pattern, now we have a different kind of pattern. Earlier 60 marks used to come for each and every question, but now 20 marker, 15 marker, 10 marker. This is how in the last 44 years how questions are being come. So the first one will give you overview about in which year how many marks came. Second section will give you the actual question. In 96, in 92, in 82, 96, if we come to the latest one, 20, 22. Sometime that particular chapter may have a question in 2022, sometime it may not. Now you see this, 2022 there was a question, but in 2019 there was no question, in 20, 22, 21 there was no question, 20 there is question, 2019 there is a question. Likewise, for each and every year, what is the theme? If you follow the syllabus exactly, the whatever subtopics they mentioned here, most of the times questions will come from the same topic which are already asked in the syllabus. That is why UPSC will never go out of the boundary or out of the zone. It always somehow restrict or stick to the syllabus. That's why if we remember syllabus, if we have this analysis with you, always we will be goal-oriented, target-oriented, then only every effort what we are going to put for history optional will give the result. Otherwise, there is a danger of entering into knowledge zone. It is very good, those who have the habit of reading a lot of books. It always enriches our brain, it always enlightens us. But at the same time, when you have certain goal and when you have limited amount of time, this is where you have to invest this particular amount of time efficiently so that you will achieve the goal in less amount of time. Otherwise, we will enter into so many books, but again, we may not get the result as we expect. We may read so many books, but when it comes to the writing, we may not be able to write comprehensively with the proper structure and its design. That's why always we should see the previous year questions and syllabus. They should always, you should always, every student in my class ask, I will ask every student in my class to carry syllabus and PYQs, always with them. Because this is the only guide for us. Now once it is done, you will have complete idea how questions are coming. Now once you master from where UPSC is asking the questions, then next element is, 
how to write best answers for these questions. Now, how to handle that? First one, obviously, chapter by chapter, we are going to analyze. Our course will deal chapter by chapter. I will cover chapter by chapter. I will teach you whatever UPSC is asking, all those aspects I'm going to teach you in the class. I will give you material also regarding each and every topic that is mentioned in syllabus. And if there is any current development related to that, I will cover that also as part of the material. Once knowing the content, now the ultimate ch challenge is how to use that knowledge, how to use that content in the answer. I will make you to write everyday question. Every day, my students are going to write one question or two question every day. Then only as long as this course is going to happen, around four months, I'm going to handle all the parts, ancient, medieval, modern, world. All the four parts we will deal in four months. All the four months, every day, every student is going to write at least one or two questions daily. This question practice ultimately give you the result. It will help you in history optional also. It will help you in other GS, SA, other aspects also, in other areas also. Everyday question. So first I will teach. Then I will give you the question from the topic. I will give you the material also. What you need to do is just listen the class properly. In the classroom, I will make you so much interesting with uh, visuals so that your brain will be able to understand history without much burden. There is a misconception that history requires remembering a lot of facts. But I am assuring you that it's like a story. Suppose if we go to movie, we will never feel burden. We enjoy three hours, and after coming out of the theater, if someone asks what is the story of the movie, Without any burden, you used to tell. You used to repeat the same movie. You can repeat without any burden. There are so many facts in the movie, but still you will never feel that these many facts your brain is remembering. That is because of the imagination and the movie that is flowing in front of your eyes. Similarly, I am going to make as much as possible to bring that kind of experience in the history so that History should be enjoyable. You will never feel burdened about history. You will never feel that you are going to remember so many facts, but still, when it comes to the answer writing, you are going to bring those facts. Because once you see in the form of visuals, your brain, without much effort, it will bring those facts. If you include geography and timeline, both visuals in front of you, your brain will capture immediately. That's why in each and every chapter, and for every second chapter, there is a logical connection to the first chapter, because it is a story. In modern times means, obviously, something has happened in these two parts. While you are reading this one, if you know what happened in ancient, obviously, medieval is the continuation of the story. Modern India is the continuation of this ancient and medieval story. And the modern world is at world level. I will try to give those logical connections so that you will feel not burdened with any fact. Our ultimate purpose is to enjoy and also give you the best quality answer and get high score. Everyday question. Now, while writing this question also, I will try to make you I will give you this kind of workbook so that you will always get the feel of UPSC. Every day, you are going to write like a UPSC test. This is called PYQ workbook. This PYQ workbook will contain, for example, this one. This is the syllabus. And in that syllabus, this is the question. 
reconstruction of early indian history is hardly possible without the help of inscriptions and coins if it is 20 marker three pages are left if it is 10 mark one page is left and 15 marker means two pages you will get so this is how you upsc you are going to get if you practice your answer writing in this obviously when you are going for the examination you will never feel something new that you are writing in the examination hall already by that time you might have a lot of experience in writing such kind of questions i will make you write in this format in question paper whatever upsc is asking in the similar fashion you are going to practice in addition to pvaq workbook and daily writing practice i will often give the mini tests also because as foundation student i need to carry gradually to you to the level of 250 marks upsc gives 250 marks question paper for 3 hours initially all students all foundation students will not be able to write 250 marks question paper in 3 hours even those who have graduation history as graduation subject they have a different kind of writing in the examination in graduation but upsc requires a different type of skill i have to train you towards that end that's why every day question pyq workbook mini tests and in the end of the course complete comprehensive co complete comprehensive test so all these things will enable you to reach 300 score here every chapter we are going to analyze very clearly with uh, different dimensions in front of you you will see so many visuals so that your brain will capture as many things as possible once it is done i will give you the material also read the material read the classroom notes and practice these questions every day if you follow for four months i am assuring that you will feel very confident about the history optional next one this is what similarly pyqs for paper 2 also we have made all the 44 years pyq analysis and as part of the foundation course i will give you previous year questions solutions also so that you will have some reference how to handle these questions because knowledge you might have lot of knowledge but ultimately if it is a 10 marker question you have to restrict yourself to the one page if it is 15 mark only two page 20 marker maximum that is three pages that is why according to the space that is given to you you have to inculcate the skill that you are going to give for the answer this is what it is going to be when it comes to analysis now when it comes to the material you will get the booklet like this chapter by chapter here i will show you how our material looks like you can see this this is the index this booklet will contain like chapter whatever upsc mentioned similar way chapter 1 enlightenment chapter 2 american revolution so french revolution the same topics whatever mentioned in the upsc syllabus those things only you will have different dimensions in that before starting any chapter first of all i am going to give pyqs because only if you see the pyqs then only you will understand how questions are coming then only whatever knowledge whatever point you will get for that particular chapter you can use in the answer that's why for everything every chapter every topic i will give you how questions are coming from that area for example if you see enlightenment for the last 44 years trend this is how 2022 likewise you will get all the questions in front of you while reading the chapter itself you will have complete overview about how questions are coming once you know the syllabus once you know how questions are coming then it is very easy for you to read the content you will not feel much burden that's why while giving the material also i gave the previous year questions year wise and you can see the trend also how trend is changing year by year 
10 years ago how questions were coming and now how questions are coming you will get complete idea about that this is how the material looks like the first beginning will be like this then this is how you will get wherever in paper one paper two in modern india and modern world we need some kind of quotes so whatever important quotes are required you will be provided then you will be given the material like this what is enlightenment then different uh, explanation in the table wise format wherever it is required some images are required means i try to give and in table format you will have this is like dimension and description dimension description dimension description so if question comes if you remember according to the 10 marker or 20 marker 15 marker you just need to pick up these dimensions and write this once you know lot of dimensions for every topic if you have a lot of dimensions writing answers is not going to be difficult task at all only challenge in the initial phase is what type of dimensions are going to come for particular topic that's why here in table format you will get just by seeing the left side column itself you will come to know these are the various dimensions in the first reading you may not get exactly what is there line by line you may not be able to get but in the first reading at least you can read the subheadings and the dimensions in the second reading you can go through what is there as a result of this or a gradually you will be able to get what exactly is given in the material this is how foundation students have to be trained because in one go in overnight no one can become a master in a particular thing it requires some time that's why i am going to take you to that level i will take you i will give you step by step steps so that you will be able to reach the higher level this is how your material is going to be so for every aspect which is given in the upsc syllabus you will be getting the material so material also you get syllabus first then pyq analysis then material then chapter by chapter we are going to handle while you are doing the class you will be given lot of exercises many questions every day questions mini tests in the end of the course overall comprehensive like 3 hours test 3 hours like upsc how you are going to write the upsc i will evaluate personally and i will give you the feedback i will meet each and every student often so that you can share your problems experiences and your whatever you want to share how to reach the goal you can share with me i will be always available to you you can meet me any time i will be available in the office this is how material now there is one part in history optional which requires special attention that is the first question in the paper 1 that is map as part of the map you will get the map material you will get map material in the form of mind maps you can see here you will get different topics you will get mind maps like this for example how many fossil sites then you will be getting like this site name then maps in which location this particular location this particular site is there then how upsc can ask this particular site same site can be asked by upsc in multiple ways it can ask hominid fossil site first hominid fossil paleolithic site prehistoric site so once you start the course you will come to know what is the difference and how we are going to handle that then you will have geography then a river because you will be given space to write only 30 words identification will give you one mark if you write proper description you will get additional 1.5 total 2.5 mark for map question so this mind map will help you to remember as much description as possible more importantly the map location because identification is very very crucial when it comes to the map 
writing 30 words is not at all a matter for the history optional student but identifying the right site only challenging one once that task is done then you will get two marks 2.5 mark easily this is how you are going to get different uh, mind maps likewise every site so this also properly organized when it comes to india map when it comes to state wide you will get like this then paleolithic these sites are also organized like syllabus wise in our syllabus we have paleolithic then mesolithic then neolithic chalcolithic megalithic harappan likewise similarly these mind maps are also organized in that way and also state wide location wise properly organized you will get this mind map also in addition to mind map you will get another map material also that material looks like this because mind map will have different presentation this material will give you complete details about each and every location in the first this is how always whatever we are studying we should not miss previous year questions in map pointing we will have these many terminologies upsc terminology these are the names upsc used to ask as part of the question that's why before entering into the map marking itself you should have how these are organized this is the chronology wise now you can see fossil type this is how upsc can ask a site of important fossils petroglyph site ancient petroglyph site proto historic then proto historic and historic sites likewise upsc will ask any of these for example if we go here you can see this is the map and if you observe this now what it is saying buddhist monastery center of gandhar art old jesuit church ancient port hoard of metal sculpture first gupta hoard of coins this is how upsc is going to give as part of the question that is why we are analyzing in which year what question is related to which topic you will get this analysis in the beginning of the material itself this is another material in addition to the mind maps so total for map you will get two materials one for mind map another one the text wise description after this analysis you will have this chapter by chapter once you enter into the chapter this is the material the hatnora this is the like so site and once this site is there then you will have different material and some of this material is converted into mind maps that is how this material will contain detailed aspect about the site and mind map will help you to retain or remember for a long time around 400 sites we are going to handle as part of map as for, for foundation students this will also be covered all the aspects which are required for history optional to crack this examination all the materials all the resources all the tools which are required to crack this examination are available while doing the course i will use the visuals as many visuals as possible so that you will never feel burdened about uh, history optional and i will try to link with the current affairs also because history is all about what lessons we learn from our past you will get different uh, current affair case studies also what lesson we can learn from the past and what is the current affair and how we can analyze this current trend these current affairs related aspects also i will try to give you in the classroom so that you will have better perspective about the history all these elements as part of history foundation course will enable you to reach 300 plus score thank you thank you very much see you in the foundation course thank you